Robbie well, isn't here today. Welcome everybody to our Saturday webinar. It is Saturday, the twenty fourth of January, and I see a lot of new people here. So welcome to our webinar. And uh, I'm gonna let Jim take over for now because he has something to say. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome and glad to see you. Um, I wanted to make a little bit of announcement. Uh, we have a friend in New Hampshire. Her name is Jeannie, and she's in the hospital right now, and they gave her only two to four weeks to live. However, I do not believe that that is true. I think she has a greater purpose in the world, and I think she's going to, to make it through. So right after this webinar, we're going to have a little prayer vigil for her. If anybody who wants to join, just stay online afterwards, and we'll say some prayers. It doesn't have to be um, official prayers or out loud or whatever. You don't have to go to your prayer book, but we'll, we'll have some silent time. We'll send her some love, energy, and healing power. And uh, then after that, uh, we can go our separate ways. But I'd like to do that right after the webinar to have a little prayer vigil for Jeannie. If anybody wants to join, uh, that would be wonderful. Um, so. I also want to remind people that Jim is having the uh, uh, channeling workshop on the 31st. So if you would like to sign up for that, please do. And um, go I got a payment. Already, I'll have to talk to you about that, uh, Susanna. Okay. Um, and there's going to be here people here in the, in the house as well. Yeah, it's a two-hour webinar. Um, so, oh, you sign up. Um, you send Jim the payment, and then just make sure you write on the payment uh, for channeling webinar. Uh, right. The post is on the website, so it'll, it tells you there a, a little bit more information. But uh, the people here could money here, so right. they don't yes. have to send it all. Yes, <laughs> on the 31st. On the 31st. 31st at 3 o'clock, is that correct? Yes, at 3 o'clock on the 31st. 3 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, Eastern Standard Time. Correct. Yes, because it benefits you, and yes. they'll benefit Jim, so everybody wins on that. Last time we had a couple people break through and start channeling during the, the teaching, and it, uh, it was really good, so it was a very cool thing. Yes. But I think there's a certain energy when we get together and try to channel together. I, I just let it flow together. Because um, it draws the attentions of those the people that want to channel through you, for one thing, because they see you all together, <clears throat> and they have a chance to uh, work with you. Because it's not only me teaching; it's it's the uh, them working with you as well. Because they want more channelers. Because there's a lot of information out there that only can come through certain people and you might be the person that it needs to come through. It is something that is, um, that it just is. I, they wanted me to be a channeler, so that's what I am, because otherwise I would have been never uh, gone that direction. I would have never thought to go to a channeling class, didn't even know what channeling really was. I've heard about it because I was a Bible student, but uh, I went to Bible college and things of that, and they said, never channel, never. It's a bad, bad thing. But you know what? God called me to channel, so it's not a bad, bad thing. It might be bad for some people who cannot control it. It might be bad for some people that want to abuse it, but it is uh, essentially not a bad thing. So <laughs> yes. just like everything else, it can be abused. So. And yeah. Beautifully said, Jim. Beautifully said. Yes. So. So now, right now, I am going to um, ask if there's anybody that you want me to channel today, one at a time. <laughs> um, I, I would say we haven't talked to Shell in a while. Is yes, Shell's good. Anybody else? Where's Shell from? 
Michelle is a Chikani. Elohim, maybe? An Elohim? Yes. We haven't talked to an Elohim, I don't No, think. we haven't talked to an Elohim. Well, you uh, have a Hebrew specialist, so... so. Uh, what did you say? Um, everything regarding the Judaism or Hebrew, I can help, so you're in luck. Okay, very good. <laughs> I know you can speak Hebrew, yes. Yeah. Jeannie was the one that taught me the Elohim. Yes. Jeannie, yes, is the one that we're going to have the prayer vigil for. She taught Sabrina Elohim. So, that was... Elohim Jeannie is, is... is a, a language and a species, but they're more angelic. Uh, the L in the front of their name is God. There's a certain, there's certain amount of... There's a, a, a group called L that is an alien group that uh, covers finances. Elohim is a more spiritual group that covers more spirituality, but the the L in front of the name is, uh, shows that they're of God. So. Yes. So, and of course, Takar or Lakesh are always welcome. So. Of course. But, been, yeah, uh, an Elohim would be nice. Okay, well, we'll see. Shell, uh, Elohim, who else has a, something to say? Anybody else has a request? Uh, it would be interesting if Almatuk could finally come through like he's been saying he would. Yeah. Oh, yes, that would be good, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea, right? Um, he'll come when he's... <laughs> when he's, thank you, <laughs> when he's ready. For those who don't know who Almatuk is, he's a uh, very hard to a hard to Oh, he's ready. Um, he's a high-dimensional priest from the Andromedan area. He lives on the seventh planet, but he is a, a mentor to many kings and queens and politicians. And but he's very, very, very high. Their civilization is very abstract. They have a lot of abstract thoughts, and they sent some to me. And we're just not ready for some of their thoughts yet. <laughs> so, um, uh, but he is said to be, uh, Rob Gothier is actually the one that pointed out that he was around me during many of the webinars, but has not spoken through me yet. So if you know who Rob Gothier is, yes. channeler of Trev, he is the one that contacted me and said, I was watching your videos and I saw Amatok. And so we had a discussion about that. That was really quite amazing. So here we go. Um, is there anybody else? Uh, other than that, I think I'm just going to go. Uh, yes. Well, yes. Yes. Well, we, well someone requested um, Old Riser. And, old Riser. <laughs> and I request a, um, a, an Anubian or a, a canine entity. Kana, we you've requested that a few times and none have come through yet. I wonder um, if they're getting our message. Let's make sure that they the canine entities hear us. So, all right. I have never channeled a canine entity, and I've never channeled Elohim. And what was the other one you just said? Um, Old Riser. Okay. And uh, Amatok. Amatok. All right. Well, I'll see you guys later. Thank you, Jim. And, and we'll see who comes through. I have no idea who's ready. Okay. But uh, I sent some good thoughts and positive energy, and it'll all work out well. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Greetings. I am Shell from the Chicani people, or Chicani, however you want to pronounce it. <laughs> welcome, Shell. Thank you for coming. Welcome, I'm welcome here Shell. Only, I'm only here for a brief moment because I do want to say something to you. I just want to say thank you for all that you are doing to help with your own ascension. Remember that unconditional love is a term that's used freely but is not always acted upon freely. Unconditional love is so difficult because if there are those around the world, especially now in your day and age in this third dimension, there's always been there's always been that element of darkness on your planet. And it's very strong in, in some places like the Middle, Middle East and in, in some areas of the world where it's very, there's a lot of famine and things of that nature. There's much darkness. But when you see that and you can unconditionally love even the people that are wrong, wrong, which you consider wrong, because there is really no wrong and right. There's only negative and positive. So when you see the negative, love the person anyway. Does that make sense to you? I know you get tired of hearing the mushy love. Love, love, love. Everybody talks about the love, but it is so important to keep the ascension alive and well and draw people in. Now, we can talk about the negative things as well. And it becomes very interesting because the dark gets darker and the light gets lighter. When we have the dualistic world that we're in, it, it offsets each other, the balance. Do you understand that? But eventually, yes. eventually that does not have to happen. But in the way that things are moving now, the dark is getting darker, the light is getting lighter, and it's moving so that the light, see, watch my hands. The light will be on top over the darkness, and then you will have them as overcoming. Does that make sense to you? But right now, it is sort of even. But as it moves, as the ascension rises, then you will be overcome the darkness. So it is an interesting concept for you because there has always been negative and positive on your planet. Always in pretty much balance, you would say. Because look at your society. Look at the way things are happening in your world. Is it really very positive? Is it really very negative? There is negative and positive mixed all together in your society. And people look at things differently because of that. And so the negative and the positive will come to terms with one another. And that's what I wanted to tell you about today. Because I congratulate some of you, most of you, for continuing to connect in a very positive way. Now there are some of you out there, I, do, I, I know who you are, you know who you are, that do not connect in a very positive way, but you know that, that you should. So that's all I say. Continue to connect in a very positive way. A loving surrounding, love each other no matter whether or not you believe they are of a, a good vibration, you, you need to connect with them anyway because that will bring them in to a different connection. Do you understand that? Your friction, your friction that you give off affects others. It always has and always will. Always has and always will. And that is what I wanted to say to you today. You affect others. Your positivity will affect others. Anything that you say or do will affect others. It affects the atmosphere. And in fact, you can go into a room, and if you are in a negative mood, you can change the, the mood of the room if, if you are strong enough. But you could also change it for the positive. If you go into a negative room and become... And you are a positive light. Do not let it squelch you, but just send out your energy and it will help improve the atmosphere of a room. It can do that. So that's how it works in the world. You send it out. You send it out. 
and it connects with others. It has to. Your fourth dimensional energy is awake, and it connects. So if, if there's someone in the room causing much negative energy, then you can try and send it out. You don't have to say a word. Send out whatever positive energy you can to help them and to help those people that are affected by them. Oh, you may not see it right away, but it does happen. It will happen that you are affecting the change. Be part of the good change, not walking into a room and making it negative, but walking into a room and raising the spirit of the room. It happens. It happens. It happens. So be aware of how strong you are as an individual because goodness and light energy is so much stronger than negative energy. It may come across as being stronger because it hits you harder. It's a facade. It's that strong ah, that hits you is only a facade. Because you get behind it, you can get to the source. Does that make sense to you? It tries to hit you hard to bring you down so that you do not affect it. But you can. You can affect it. And you will affect it. Um, yes, Shell. How do you, you know, as we observe all the negative things that are happening in the world? Yes. What is the best way to observe it and keep your vibrations? Because, you know, at times it's, it's difficult when you see certain things happening in the world. Yes, because it affects, you were brought up to be affected by things. And that is good. That's not necessarily a bad thing. You are affected by negative energy. You are affected by positive energy. You see things, you call them wrong and right. I call them positive and negative. You, bring, you understand what they are, but when you look at it, see that, that it can have a positive outcome. Pray for a positive outcome for anything that is negative. Now, you must love the people that are doing these negative things as well. Because if you do not, then you are spreading negativity. You will... You will be negative toward them, and that spreads negativity. But if you love them, you do not have to love their actions. I'm sure some of you heard that before. Oh, I don't like their actions, but I love the person. But then they go ahead and treat the person like their negative action. They, they don't treat them as a person. They treat them as the negative that they, they perceive in them. That is not the way it's done. You have to find the positive in the person even though they may be confused and they may have many, many dark shadow energies in them. You must bring out with your prayers, with your understanding, with your thoughts, bring out as much goodness toward them as you can because it affects the world. Now, there is so much negativity pointed at them right now that they have power beyond imagination. People are saying negative things about them. They are pointing fingers at them. They are making their negativity five times stronger because they are they're pointing negative. They're giving them more negative energy. Does that make sense to you? Yes. The positive energy, it brings down the negative energy. And they will not be able to do the horrible things that they are doing because you are changing their energy. Does that make any sense to anyone? Yes. Very yes. good. It makes sense. Change their energy. Do not feed their energy. Change their energy. Okay. Do not feed their energy. There, that's how I say it. Can we okay. ask questions? Go ahead, Jesse. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, awesome. I just want to say this is my first webinar, so thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> um, I guess my question was actually about our prison system. I've really yes. felt drawn to working with our prison system, and it's. I live in America where our country is very based on punitive action and punishing those who've 
uh, committed crime. So I'm kind of curious how you see the evolution of our prison system, especially when you compare it to places that are more progressive and enlightened, like Norway or some of the under, other Scandinavian countries. It just really bothers me, and I, I'm curious to learn your perspective. Yes, it will all change, but learn this about your prison system. Whenever there's such negativity brought together, what happens? In your prison system, you have many of those that are so down that they cannot, they do not see a light at the end of the tunnel. But then, what happens? Many light, positive things happen in prison. There are prayer groups. There become Christians there or enlightened there or writers there. There is positive things that come out of it. Let's feed those positive things that feed the positivity in those individuals so that they can come out and when they look at the light it actually means something to them. When they look at the world it actually is better for them. But many times they are pushed into such a dark place in the prison system that they do not see any of that light. But then you cannot stay in that dark situation forever. Either you, you are going to kill yourself or you're going to find something positive. And let's send positive energy to the prisons because, once again, it changes people. Do not send them negative energy. That just gives them more negative. Send them positive energy. And I like what you said about the other systems you know, on your planet. Yes, some other systems are much better. They bring about change for the positive, and they bring about understanding of, of how to be a better person. That is not happening in the United States system. There is some places where there is some, <clears throat> there is some of that happening, but it is not in abundance is not in abundance. And there are places where the churches go into the, the, the prisons and things of that nature, but that's sometimes not a good thing because they preach down to people. You have to preach up to them and love them. You can't say, oh, you're a bad person, but we love you anyway. We, yes, you can, but it's, they don't do it in the right way. They have to take the love and reach out with it instead of just giving them words. You understand what I'm saying? They give them a bunch of words, but they do not give them their love. They give them their words. But you have to give them their love, your love. And that is what changes people. When they see love in somebody else that's being given to them, how do you feel? How does anybody feel when they see that they are being accepted? When they are being loved, this activates positivity. I know. I'm giving you a bunch of words, but I'm also giving you my love. Thank you so much. <laughs> does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. It's, um, it is negative can be fought with negative and you really... I just think it's really fascinating because, you know, prisoners are seen as the most we dehumanize them in the United States so often and people who commit murders or commit crimes of great heinousness I guess you would say they seem to lose their humanity in our system and I think it's really important to extend compassion and understand oh, yes. them. Yeah. They are still human. There is still part of them that is the flame that was born into them. That spirit that is surrounded by flesh can be so tiny at times. What you need to do is feed that flame of love and goodness and spirit and not feed the, fl feed the rest of the negativity, but feed that flame that is their soul. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> um, Shell, what about when it comes to um, negativity that's coming from a person that's sick. How do you best deal with that so that you're compassionate 
Uh, but you don't get wrapped up in the pain that they're feeling at that moment. Excellent question. First, you protect yourself, and and then you protect them because okay. Um, but you know what? Sometimes it's better to protect them first. And let me give you a, an example of that. When you're on an, one of your airplanes and the oxygen masks come down, you do not put yours on first, do you? Yes, you do. Yes, you, yes, do. you do. But then you put it on. Uh, you put yours on so that you will survive, correct, and help others. Yes. So you protect yourself. Protect yourself first, and then you protect the others. Because if you have a child with you, you will have to put that on the child, just like the sick person. But second of all, you give them positive energy, you give them love, you tell them how much you before they have a chance to Uh, I think he was muted. Hold on. Hold on. Hello? Okay, now we can hear you. What happened? Jesse muted you by mistake. <laughs> oh. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I thought I just muted you for me because I needed to step away for a second. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have a, did you hear anything that I said? <laughs> no. We, we, no, we, we left off as you protect yourself and you protect then... You, uh, you protect yourself and then you protect who is with you. You can protect them first, but yourself is the most important because you are the one bringing the positive energy. Protect yourself with white light. Yes. Protect yourself in any way that you find is useful to you. Now, some people put a white light on, but they don't use it. Meaning that they, they in the morning they wake up and say, oh, I put a white light on, but they don't even think about what they're doing. When you do a protection on yourself, you must understand that you there is some thought that you must put into it. That some some things that you must put into it, like what? A, thank you, thank you, God, for giving me protection. Thank you, God, for or or whatever entity that you speak of that is higher than yourself that is protecting you. And some people have different ways of doing it, but it it must not be a mindless thing. It must be something that you actually think about. This is protection for the day. There's many things you might run into. There's many people that may want to cause you harm. So you must understand that protection is important in the, in the day. So put your protection on. Protect those around you. And be the first to speak positively. If you go to the hospital and they are laying in bed, and you come into the room, you should be the first to speak. You should say, hello, how are you? I love you. I hope you are feeling better today. Give them a bunch of positive energy right away. Right away. You see, on our world, positive energy is more abundant in some ways. And so we are able to affect that situation more abundantly. You see, pain and, and, and things of that nature of negative things do exist. However, we know how to bring them out of them much easier because of the dimensional aspects and our technology is much higher as well. So, um, but dimensional aspects are important. But you must be the first to bring something positive to that room. When you walk into that room, energize that room with your positive energy, like I mentioned before. Put your positive energy into a room when you walk into it. It does make a difference. Yeah, I, I mean, normally what I try and do is talk about something funny or, or that to, to sort of get what they have in their mind. But then they end up going back to everything that they have and all the symptoms and listing everything. 
uh, and then if sometimes if you if you don't allow them to speak about it, it's like you're ignoring the pain that they're feeling. Do you do you know what I mean? It is it is your place to acknowledge that you understand that they have pain, and that 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 if they want to talk about that pain a little bit, that is okay. Let me tell you why. Because you are protected. You are protected from that negativity. If you come into a room and you have put positivity into the room, they can say whatever they want. Your positivity is still bringing the, the room up. But, and it is going to diminish what they have to say. It's going to, it, they're not going to want to speak about that as much. They may speak about it, but if the more positive you are, perhaps you will be able to reach them. Now there are some, I know, that they talk about their their health constantly. That is like their major subject on your planet. Oh, I have this, I have that, and I have the other thing. I, I'm going <laughs> here and I have a pa I'm a patient with so and so and so and so. And, uh, uh, my son's a doctor too, and he takes care of me. But uh, there are many, many people who like to talk about the negative. But when you throw a positive energy into the room, it makes it much harder to talk about the negative. <laughs> Believe it or not. Believe it or not. It makes it harder to talk negative if someone else is very, a very positive. But um, that rule doesn't always apply, but for many people it does. Okay, thank you. There are those that are dwelling in negativity, that if they see a positive person, they just want to shut them down. You've run into those people too, correct? Yes, yes. So, <laughs> it happens. They say, so, what is he happy about? Yeah. They do not want to be around, because they're, they do not want positivity. They do, they do not work well with it. <laughs> <laughs> because it is just not who they are at that time. But those are the people that you want to run from in some way. So, but still fill the room with positivity, it may, but it makes them crazy. Okay, thank you. Ruth has a question. Hello, Shell. Hello! <laughs> I call myself Safira when I'm not calling myself Ruth. <laughs> it's my spiritual name. And okay. I have a Two questions. One is, what kind of illnesses, both physical and mental, do you have in your dimension, if any? How do you heal them? Yes. And the other question is a little bit different. What do you do when you're not here with us? And are you involved in helping prevent earth calamities like Grupfichnerias? Do you work with them on that? Um, let me answer the second one first, since it's the closest. Okay. Um, I study Earth in my spare time, and I am interactive in other places other than just here with you. I have other people that I do channel with, and I do, but not in this on this level. But I do, in my world, do much study of how Earth is moving in their ascension. And if I see problems, I report them to Grok If I And I also am a spiritual leader on my planet. Mm -hmm. Bashar is way a much greater figure than I. He's older and wiser and has much more information. But here I am to help you as much as I can. Now, the first question was what? What kind of illnesses, both mental and spiritual? Of course, on all planets there's microbes, viruses and organisms and things that affect even fourth and fifth and sixth dimensions. There can be uh, different uh, things that are dimensional illnesses. There is um, what you would call mental illnesses as well, but we can help them very easily with, in many ways. So with technology and with uh, counseling that is very positive. And also, um, there are some forms of cancer 
Now, cancer on in our dimension is not the same. It is more external than internal. So it, it affects the outside of the body, but it's still very... It's uh, There is some internal, but not very much. It's mostly external. Mm -hmm. So things like that. I, I don't really want to dwell on illnesses and things of that nature, but... Um, Yes, we do have some. How do you heal them? In which which well, mechanics do you have? Te yeah, technology. Also, uh, we do uh, RNA treatments, which uh, at, when you are born, you get an RNA outlook and a DNA outlook. And then uh, from that perspective, we can tell if there's something... If you go to the doctor, they do an RNA outlook and a DNA outlook, and if there's something changed within the RNA or DNA, it's usually on. It's because there's an illness or something of that nature, and mm -hmm. so our our RNA and DNA is affected by illness. So that's the first thing they do is do a scan on that, and then if there's something in the RNA or DNA that should not be there, it is removed. Now, Can you yes. Uh, excuse me. Can you do healing for us on Earth as well, if we ask you? Well, we do not have that. Well, we do have the technology. We are not allowed to interact in that way, according to the laws of our people at this mm -hmm. point, because it can be, it can change how you move forward in your life. And that is something that we cannot affect. We cannot affect your life in a way that uh, changes your learning. And sometimes disease is part of your contract. Hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, Shell. You're welcome. I am not supposed to be here this long. But thank you for all your questions, and I hope I answered them effectively. But I must go. And if someone else will come in my place, is that permitted? Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for very coming. Much. Thank no, you. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening, and I hope you got my message about positive energy, giving it away. I see that it is so important to affect the ascension, is that you have to stay positive, and a lot of people can bring you down easily. So don't let that happen. Bring out your positive energy and let them deal with your positive energy, not you deal with their negative energy. Thank you for sharing with us, Shell. You are welcome. Now I must go. <laughs> Be Namaste. well. Namaste. I am Metlaranus. You would speak of me as a canine entity. Hello, welcome. 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 Why, thank welcome. you. Why do you want to speak to me? Nitrous did. Nitrous. Hello. Hello. What did you say your name was? Metrolamus. Um, oh, it would be pronounced here. What do you uh, look like?
I do not know how to describe myself to you, but I am a large being in your terms, muscular, I am bipedal, is that the word? Yes. Bipedal. We came from quadrupedal centuries ago. I have the head of, it looks like more like a wolf on your planet, I would think. Or a dog, some dogs, dogs. K9, dark colors. Of course, there is all colors of canines. What else do you want to know? Um. My features are... We do not have hair all over the body like your canines anymore. We have come past that. We still have hair on on the head, on the whole head. Hmm. Um, I have a soulmate who is a canine being. Are you from her uh, planet? What is her name? Well. She says that her name is Delilah because her actual name would not, I would not be able to pronounce it. She is from a neighboring planet. We have a few. Yes. Deliantasaka is her name. Deliantasaka. Deliantasa. I can't even pronounce it anymore. Your language. Deliantasaka. Deliantasaka. Oh, yes, thank you. So you said you're muscular. Do you mean like a werewolf? Let me investigate that term. Ha! Ah. A f fictional animal. No. Yes. But not quite the same. But yes, in some ways. Mm -hmm. Well, um, well I, I've been um, integrating energies with me, and I've been wondering that asking questions to myself about if I am to be a conduit for the canine energies because I have a but because I have much connections with that energy one moment let me connect with you open yourself please you have more than Canine energy, there's much animal energy within you. Interesting. Continue. Um, what is your message to humanity? You called me. I had no message for you. I wanted to see what you were about. We do not have people around your planet yet. I have a question if I could ask it. Certainly. Yeah, so, um, hello, nice to meet you, Metro Lamas. I guess my question was, I w I'm fascinated by Egyptian culture and uh, new yes. big deity in ancient Egyptian religion. So I'm curious what role uh, your race or canine races had with ancient Egypt. Yeah. We were there, yes. You see us on their walls. Anubis. So is that a good is that a good approximation of what you physically look like? Or is it is it actually quite different? <laughs> it is similar. The head is smaller now. 
Okay. It is getting smaller, but not much yet. It is similar. What role did you play in, in their culture? We took care of the dead. Okay. We, our beliefs at those times were that we could help them get to the new world in a different way than they had ever thought before. And we were successful because their ideas and thoughts about how to get to the new, the oversoul, were not as successful. Now, when a person is leaving their body, yes, it is true that they will go to the Oversoul. We made the experience a little bit more attractive. Does that make sense to you? Yes. We brought, it to, we brought there a thoughts of spirituality into a greater realm by using pictures and ideas to move them into a more positive idea of what the next life would be. Because, of course, no one knew what it was until you get there. We have a greater understanding of that now. But our way was helpful to them because they felt comforted because before us, they did not believe in an afterlife. They felt that they just were non-existent. But we brought them pictures and understanding of what the next life would be like. We were not always correct, I am sure. But it gave them more comfort. So what's your... Uh uh, culture like the Aka. Our culture. The word culture, yes. That is our societal makeup. Is somewhat communal. It is what it is, but what I have to explain is that humanity lives like we live in some ways, but we have more control of our society than you have on your. Our society is not so opinionated. Is that the right word? And controlling. We let live a little more easily. I'm not sure how I do it, describe it. Do you understand me, or am I using bad words? Yes, we understand you. I am not familiar with your language as much as I should be to do a communication. It's, it's fine. You're coming across very well. We're understanding what you're expressing. I am uh, slightly uncomfortable. I have a question? Yes. How do you connect with all that is? All that is. Next. What, what's a, a, main, a main part of your spirituality? Ah, oh. spirituality. Our gods are the same as yours, except we put different faces on them than you put on your gods, of course. But they do the same things. They work the same ways. And they give us the comfort that we need for moving through our lives and knowledge and understanding. Does that make sense to you? I am a family person. I believe family is when you have 
children, and equivalent other partner. Is that the way to say it? I am a spiritual person as well as my family. We go to places to give honor to our gods. We believe they are helpful and loving. I feel like I am not speaking well. You're speaking very well. You're doing a beautiful job. Thank you. We are simply listening. We hear you. We are quiet because we are listening to you. Thank you. I have a quick question, if that's okay. I was curious, what density are you in, and how old are you on your planet? What the lifespan is of your race? We are actually third density like yourselves. But some of us move to fourth density. We can live in the fourth density as well. But I prefer third density. And what is the lifespan of your race? On Earth, it's usually 80 to 100 is the maximum. Our lifespan is not long. It is very similar to yours. 80 to 110. OK. Um, you said that Delian Tassica was on a neighboring planet. Um, are you able to give me the name of the planet? The name of the planet. Ah. Yes. The name of the planet is Tor. 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 I do not know the spelling, just the pronunciation for your world. Do you have approximate location with respect to Earth? I do not know where I am. I was called and Delilah knows this information, but I do not. Sir? Oh, oh, I thought you were done. Sorry, Pegasus. Well, oh, I have one more. Um, so, I like two more questions. Um, what is your role in your society? I'm a guardian. I guard those that have the power to rule. And I also guard those who cannot guard themselves. Oh, you still have the need for guardians on your planet? Yes. Oh, and are there any uh, uh, humans on your world? Would, 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 would an Earth human be able to come and visit your world? Yes, but there are none there now that I know of. I'd, I'd like, like to volunteer. I was caught off guard by your question. But you may visit. I have no problem. Prepared to be smelled. Oh, that's fine. Delilah smells me all the time. But yeah, you just brought up a new question for me. Smelling. You smell others? Yes. Uh, she is saying that that is a form of getting to know people. Yes. 
smelling you lets me know your fears and your understandings of social graces because your reaction to my smelling you will let me know how you feel about my community and my family. Oh, well, um, I wouldn't mind that at all. It also tells me many other things. What part of the world you come from, your location from birth, and where you live now, because they all have distinctive smells. Are you able to smell me now? No. Okay, I have no more questions. Thank you. I will go then. <clears throat> oh, wait. Um, there is one more question, if you can. Yeah. Yes. Hello. My name is Shiu. Can you hear me? What is your name? Shiu. Yes, I hear you. You said that you prefer to live on the third density. Can you explain yes. why not going to the fourth? Third density brings me much more senses. Sensory, sensory adaptions. Fourth dimension is wonderful. Do not misunderstand. I prefer the more primitive dimension because I am more adapted to it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Love. What is love? Yes, I understand. Thank you. Thank you, Marijuana. Love and I thank you for answering our questions and coming. Many touches and smells to you. Oh, wait. Uh, can I ask one more Same before you Same to you. Yes. Well, where do you, where would you uh, smell us? I smell everywhere. I do not find one location to smell because there are many locations. Once I get to know you better, I will smell you more often. Okay, um, one more. How tall are you? Are your, are your uh, people? I am six foot four inches in your dimension. We do understand numbers very well. Did I answer that correctly? Yes, you answered it fine. Um, thank you, and I would like to see you sometime, and I have nothing else to say. Thank you for visiting us. We appreciate it. And for you to come in and answer Pegasus' questions. Many touches and smells to you. Many touches and smell to you. <laughs> Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Shalom. Uh, Yeah, whatever.
Oh, what was that guy's deal? Wow. He was <laughs> pretty strange. <laughs> Riser. Hello, Riser. Hello. Uh, yeah. Hello. I fit in this body better than now that I had a tail reduction. Can you tell us more about that tail reduction? I've been wondering about that. <laughs> well, we're reptilians. We, well, certain species of reptilians can remove their have their tails removed. Some of them are born without a huge tail. Some of them have a big, huge tail. It's just part of you know your genetics. So yeah, I had a I had. To have some of it removed to to be able to get in here properly, but I get a lot of ribbing around my planet for that, so it's all right. It'll grow back. <laughs> <laughs> what what tail does your function have for your body or your uh, radar? Or it doesn't really have much function anymore. It used <laughs> to have a function. But it doesn't have much of a function right now. I mean, it's just sort of decorative. If you want to, I mean, a big <laughs> tail is real. It's popular. So, um, but they used to be sensory. I uh, they used to be uh, used for sensing things and for defense and things like that. But right now, I mean, yeah, not much use really. So that's why I said, hey, what the heck? Get it reduced. I, <laughs> just so right. I can do this. I've never, I've never spoken to you before. I just want to say I've watched a lot of the webinars, and you're by far one of the celebrities. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming oh, through. Yeah. I asked you. Sure. Yeah, I'm a Brad Pitt. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> much prettier. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I studied all that stuff. Yeah, I see who he is. Uh, everybody loves Brad Pitt. They love me just like, like Brad Pitt. So. Well, I guess I, I, I wanted to ask you, we were talking about negativity early and, and negativity in humans especially, and I was curious about the use of code words or programming, programming emotions and... Yeah concepts into a word or into an image that you could call upon when you were in times of stress or times of conflict. So I was curious if you could talk about how to create these kinds of words or images and if you know what I'm talking about and if you use that in your race. Well, we do, we have used it. They've become obsolete in some way. But okay. I can tell you, what I think I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Some, there was a time during our war time when you would call upon the, the inner strength and it would have a word that would be attached to bring that out. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I'm kind of talking about t like when you're about to enter a negative situation, maybe yeah. programming a word or ha using meditation yeah, in a way. Exactly. When we're, we were about to enter a battle, there was a, we brought a code word for to bring out our strength and our endurance and our highest understanding and um, intellectual thought for that period. So there was a slight time of meditation before battle. Yes. How 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 can we humans work on doing that? Or do you have any? It has to be individualized, though. You have to understand. We didn't all use the same word. We didn't all just go uh, ramba bamba and there it is. But um, I had a special word that I use, which is private, and I'm not going to tell you what it is because you could say it and it draws. It would make me react in certain ways. But I have myself programmed for this particular word so that I could be my best in battle. Now you. Wow. Pardon me. Oh, how can we as humans do that? It's easy. You just uh, do a meditation. You uh, you do a intention meditation for that sort of thing, and you do it many times. The more you do it, the stronger you can be. 
but then you you can call on that word because the, your spirit guides will give you the word. Uh, okay. It is it's not cool. that you will be familiar to you right away, but it will become familiar to you. Does that make sense to you? Ah. Yes, thank you. Yeah, your spirit guides will give you a word that nobody else will know. See, if, uh, if people know you real well, they could probably guess your word or, or at least assume that they can get close to it. But with the spirit guides giving you the word, nah, they won't even get even that. Nah, <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, Riser. This is yeah. Sab. I'm going to ask a question for Adriana. Um, she said um, that she said, I wanted to know who was the reptilian being I saw at the park. He approached me and said something in a strange language. Yeah, yeah. She wants to know what that was about. All right. What was her name? Adriana. She's here, but she I guess she doesn't have a, a mic. Ah, Adriana. Yeah, that was one of our people. Yeah. Um, what did he want? I'm not yeah. sure. But uh, I could ask him. Hold on. Okay, thank you. Yeah, correct. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he knows that you know about reptilians, so he wanted to know what you thought about him. He he was sort of like, like uh, he didn't know that you couldn't understand him. Since you know about reptilians, he thought if he spoke reptilian, you would understand it. But next time he'll talk to you in English, all right? I, he asked you some questions, that's all. Like, what are you doing here? Why are you, why are you in the park? You know, I... Uh, but you didn't understand what he was talking about. He was just making small talk, basically. <laughs> okay, sure, you're next. Hello, uh, Rigel. Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 I hear you. Can I ask you about uh, reptilians in Israel? Uh, what? If there's any reptilians in Israel in the politician. Oh yeah, well, they're, they try, yeah. They try, they didn't succeed? There's a lot of reptilians in Israel and in the ah. Middle East. But if I'll give you some names. Some of those guys, yeah. They've gotten to some of those guys, but not to everybody. But they've gotten to more of the, the Russians than they have to the Middle Easterns because they're hard heads down there. They really, they really have an agenda and they stick to it. But they've got made some headway into that because they um, pretend like they're part of their agenda, so they listen to them. Yeah. Mm. If I'll give you some uh, politics names in Israel, can you tell me if they're involved? All right. I can, I may be able to tell you. Okay. Um, Benjamin Netanyahu. Benjamin Netanyahu. The Prime Minister. Yeah. One moment. He has a reptilian working very close to him. However, they don't see eye to eye on everything. Some things, yes, but not everything. They they argue a lot in a very, very, very high class way. So they they but they do argue. Can you tell me what his name is? Who? The reptilian? If it's okay. No, I'm not allowed to to do do that. No. Okay. Close. He's one of his advisors. Oh. And okay. And somebody who works for him very closely. Yep. Okay. Can I give you some more names? Sure. Why not? Okay. Uh, Yair Lapid. What? Yair Lapid. Yair Lapid. I don't know who that is. 
אוקיי, יור לאק דן. ליברמן. אה, ליברמן, אני יודע מה זה. יאההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההה
affecting their, that's interacting with their dimension. But so they see they have a big argument there. They have a big argument there because they were not specific. Well, it says third dimension. It does not say anything about teleporting or anything like that. That they would have so they're working on making an addendum or presenting your your politicians with a way to get around it. But they haven't they haven't got around it yet because they're saying if you take our people off the earth, that's deal that's a deal breaker. Okay, now where does our free will come in on this? Oh, it doesn't, dear. <laughs> no. Uh, your government is not free will. No. Uh, your free will is to say, yes, I can, I'll go if they let me. But your government is saying, you're not going. So that that's not your free will. That's their free will. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's, that's where uh, some of us, you know, are a bit, uh, I guess, annoyed over this because... Um, it, it should be our decision to make. I understand if they're protecting, if they were protecting us, but if we are making the decision to go. Yeah, well, it, it's just like a law. You don't break, if you break the law, that was your free will to break it, but they, it's their free will to throw you in the pen or whatever. Right. So, yeah, th when it comes to this, your government is in control. You have no say at this point. Okay, now taking it up, taking us off planet, it's not on 3D. So I don't understand how they could even argue that. Yes. Well, they're saying you're in 3D when the beam comes down. If they take, you're allowed to go astrally because your body is still on the Earth. If they take your physical body off the earth that's the that's uh, messing with third dimension and it's a breach of their contract do you understand yes now how does that work when there's other civilizations doing it they don't have a contract with them right so yeah they were sort of stupid to make a contract almost but the reason why they did is so they could help because they would not let them help because part of the contract is don't take over our our area, don't take over our government, don't take over this. That's why they let them help is because they said they wouldn't take over anything, right? That was what the contract is basically about. There's a lot of other little stuff in there, but it's basically don't take us over, don't be the ruler, let us stay in charge. When does the contract end? Uh, that I don't know. I wasn't there. But uh, I know that it's still enforced right now. No. But they're trying to make addendums to it. Okay. Now, what do you know when this contract was made? About uh, seven years ago. Maybe six. But uh, it wasn't really... Uh, they really didn't start helping too much until... It, the contract was made, but it wasn't... Uh, pounded out till about five years ago. Okay. Because the weather started to get really bad. I started to get, it's still pretty bad now. I mean, it's not going to get better. Let's put it that way. Yeah, because my, my question is how, because it's, it, it we're, we we're sort of going in a circle because Obviously, they don't want to lose control. Oh, and, sure. and this is about empowering us. So, I do you see the conundrum here? Of course, but it's your government that made the the whole mess, really. Yeah. If it just a, would have let us let them help without doing all this crap. Exactly. Just help us, you know, but your government is too suspicious and too uh, paranoid to do anything without writing. And they're still paranoid about that, even though there's a treaty and all that stuff. They, they know that it can be broken, you know, but they're, 
the fact that they put it in place was a trust factor, okay? So, because they, it's better to have one than not, according to your government. Do you understand that? Okay, now, now, now why did they have to ask the government? Because the government would shoot the, those freaking UFOs out of the sky if they, as soon as they detected them, so that's why. So they have the capability to do that? Well, yeah, they do in some ways, yeah. And, but the thing is, who wants to be shot at all the time, you know? Yeah, You're gonna, no, I agree. So there, it's like, don't shoot us. That's part of the contract that you that they, the ships can be there. And okay. They don't. They know the ships are there. They're in fourth dimension, but they can. You see, your your government can shoot down a fourth dimensional ship. Oh really? Oh yeah. Because that was the other question. Yeah. How, do, how does a third dimensional weapon shoot a fourth uh, dimensional ship? Other aliens that give them the the information to do it because they don't want Gurfik near to help you so they'll give them the technology to shoot out a fourth dimensional ship sure that helps them okay and that would be I guess the ones not wanting us There's ascending no don't know about what's going on with all these freaking aliens they're just it's a mess on your planet oh. <laughs> I mean and they're everywhere and they're and nobody knows who to trust or whatever. It's just ridiculous. But it's still working so far. But uh, my personal thought, it's going to break down one of these days because just it's just too much. Okay. So. Let me ask you, um, do you, do you know Bashar? Do you know who he is? Oh, yeah. Bashar, yeah. Okay. He recently made some predictions. What? Uh, about the Earth, um, something happening this year towards the end of the well, year. Yeah, I think it'll be more 2016, but yeah, he could be right. Okay, that that, that okay. And what about um? I don't know. There's there are numerous predictions that he made. Do you know anything about that? I really don't pay much attention to all these other channelers. They always contradict each other, and I yes. find them to be. So anyway, um, but you know what? To make a prediction like some of the ones that he made, he has to have some. He has to have visited another timeline, and according to galactic law and stuff like that. Um, that it's interesting that the, he's allowed to. Right, because so. he's never done that before. So no, I don't, I mean, he's never made predictions before. So that means he had to visit another timeline. So whatever, I just hope he visited the right timeline to give the right predictions. Right, and that's that was my next question because how does he know that we're going to ship to that timeline? That is a very good question, and my question as well. Because if he's shifted to the wrong timeline and he made these predictions, then they're not going to happen. But let me tell you something about Rashar. He's pretty bright. He's a bright guy. He's very, very in tune. <laughs> so um, uh, I have a feeling that uh, they allowed him to do a little bit extra. So. Okay, because then we have, on top of that, we have the L predictions. Yes, the L predictions are also, you have to look at another timeline, yep. Um, because so, like, in the meantime, there's a lot of variables. Right. You know what I mean? Things yeah. that they may not have foreseen with all these freaking aliens coming down, they, they might interfere some way that will change everything. So... You don't know. Yeah, because it, it also seems that there's a lot of aliens coming in to watch the show. Yeah, that's what I just said. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it's a craft shoot. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Angela had a question. Yeah.
Hit it, girl. You need to unmute yourself. Uh, all right, hold on. Ah, uh, there you are. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I wanted to know if you knew anything about the crystal skulls that, that are around now. Yeah, they're, they're going to get together. They're, all right, the crystal skulls have a lot of different representations. So um, they they have energy together. When they're when you bring them together, they're going to have a great amount of energy. There's 13 of them, I understand. 12 of them and one in the center. And the central one is the controller. And the 12 are for the stargates. You have 12 stargates around your planet, and they're they're the actual controllers of the Stargates. And the middle one is the controller of all the controllers. So um, you're going to find that it's a very interesting time when those come together because the Stargates will appear. All right. I see. Is um, the... Uh leader in Russia still controlled by a reptilian? Yes. Interesting. Okay. That's all the questions I have. Okay. Yeah, he's still controlled. Uh, they're trying to give him a little bit more of emotional lately because it's been noticed that he's been like a blank sheet of paper. You, you see him and he's like nothing there. So they're trying to give him a little more emotion so people don't, you know, start really believing that he's a reptilian. So but he's just controlled by him. He's not really a reptilian. But, boy, he's he's starting to have a little more emotion. It's it's not working for him, though. He's not one that works with emotion well. So, so I have a question. <laughs> yeah. You said there were 12 in a circle with one in the center. Yeah. I've been getting a different configuration over yeah. the past couple of years. It's oh, what is it? More of a stellated dodecahedron. Oh, okay. Like a star. Well, yes, Three you can put it like that. Yes, it's it's not a circle really. It's but I'm just saying there's one in the center. Right. But the 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 format of the of the the uh, skulls is however it's supposed to be. And that could be a dodecahedron because those are popular in in space. So I'm not quite sure because I'm not really privy to all the crystal skull information. I, but I do know they are all there. They're all existing at this time. I think they're all found actually at this point. So beware, they'll be coming together one of these days. And then the Stargates will appear. Is that what you got, Stargates? So, yes. All right. Very good. The configuration is on some kind of alien parchment somewhere, but and I know somebody has it, but I don't know. Uh, hi. Have you and I ever met before? Oh, we met a couple times, yeah. What was it like? You were curious about who I was and all that stuff, and because um, you're you're actually a a very inquisitive guy about all different kinds of species. So you're like a you're like keep a, a mental record of different species that you met. So yeah, we had a small conversation, and I was uh, you know, it was right after you came back from the colonies once. Because I had a question for you about the colonies. I won't. I, I was going to ask you about your sexual exploits in the colonies. So, uh, but we did not. Um, we didn't really. Uh, I didn't really uh, get much from you on that. So we'll see. What did I say? You did say that 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 was sort of none of my business. But. Um, but you were saying there is some, but it's none of your business. <laughs> well, yeah, because I, I never re remember going to the colonies. I know. Um, you remember talking to me? No. 
Ah, bummer. Um, not too long ago, the United States Air Force released their UFO files. How will this affect us? Yeah, those things. You know, the file that they released has been doctored. So don't take too much. Don't put too much into that. I mean, some of the files are okay because they don't say anything. But some of the ones that have real accounts, they did not release. The, some of the real juicy stuff is still a top secret. They released hundreds of thousands of pages of stuff that's benign. So, um, in many senses. Did you look at it yet? I looked at it, but I quickly just left because I knew that there would be nothing interesting. There's nothing interesting. Yawn! That's what it is. <laughs> Oh, so a hundred thousand yawns. That's all it is. Also, so, you, uh, yeah, I believe sometime in the past you said that you're not and you weren't really interested in Earth movies. Not really. Well, there's I'm one not, coming out I next. Think, <laughs> I think Godzilla's a hoot, but. I, they made it over and over again. I like every version of Godzilla. I think that's one of my favorites. But I don't watch very many other ones. That Godzilla one is funny, though. That is a hoot. Well, there's one. There's an interesting movie coming out next month called Jupiter's Ascending, and that one has reptilians in it. Ah, very good. I'll have to look into that one. I think you'll love it. Oh, have you seen it? It's not out yet. I've only seen the trailer. Ah, trailer. Oh, okay, yeah, trailer. Okay. Hey, Ri hey, Riser. Um, I just had a really quick question. I was curious what you could tell me about. There's a Pleiadian race, and they're actually blue skin, and they're the tall blue skinned ones. <laughs> and it's usually the they seem to wear a shawl, like a kind of cloak. And yeah. usually the women or the men have, like, a bindi, like a dot in their forehead. And they usually yeah. have um, very crystal-like eyes. I was curious what you could tell me about the race, the names, and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Wow. I have, they're Pleiadians. They're the tall Pleiadians. Uh, but they're not, the, they're not in contact with the Earth right now. They, they were for a while. They moved out. They're, they're regrouping to do some explorations of different places as well as Earth. And um, they will be back. But what did you want to know, really? They're just in the Pleiadian system. They are yeah. blue-skinned. They do have crystal kind of eyes. Um, they, their eyes are very shiny. I don't know if you call them crystal, but you're shiny anyway. But, um, and they're... Um, they're a nomadic sort of tribe, sort of thing. They they do have a home planet, and it's in the Pleiades, but they do sort of roam around. All of them, uh, at, now that they have space uh, availability to get into space, they, they like to roam around. However, they, uh, a couple of their ships have been exploded by gas pockets in space, so... They have to be. They they went back to regroup because they lost the ship recently. What's their um, race name? And do they? Is it a feminine race? Like, are there males in that race? Yeah, because there's males. Well, yeah, there are males and females, but they're moving into a unitarian kind of species. Where, um, but that's like, I could go on talk about. They're sort of boring. So, <laughs> I, I, yeah, they're, they're sort of boring, so you really don't want to know that much about them. Uh, they're, <laughs> they're coming back. Yeah. Um, old Riser, hi, this is Safira. Hey. Um, there is one more question, but if you or Jim are too tired, then we can end it here. Would you have energy for one more question? <laughs> There was only one more question, so go for it. Okay, this is from Shrone. Go ahead, Shrone. 
Thank you, Sarah. Hello, Riser. <laughs> Thank Hello. you for being here. You're really uh, hilarious this morning. Um, I wanted to ask. Um, I didn't get it. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask if you could tell us about your favorite memory up to date, up to, so far. Uh, my favorite human memory or reptilian memory? Either one, whichever one you prefer. Uh, okay, well, I have a lot of favorites, actually. But I won an award. Uh, about, I won an award. What, what? Whoop, whoop. Yeah, yeah. Congrats. Yeah. I won an award for my military strategy about, I don't know, 42 years ago or something. But that was one of the highlights of my life is that uh, they – recognized me for my strat strategic uh, abilities, and that was an earthly, that was sort of an earthly remembrance, because I was, I was very, very good on Earth. I was very strong, very, uh, I had a great brain and stuff, so, yeah. Do you remember who you were? Uh, yeah, but I'm not going to tell you who that was. Okay. Because I became somebody of sort of notoriety. So. Right. So I couldn't really tell you that. <laughs> but you'll figure it out someday. <laughs> yeah, you'll figure it out. I rose through the ranks. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, if that's right. it, I'm going to go. That's it. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for coming, Thank Walter you. Iser. Please remember to tell Bougie my love. message. Much love. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. I gotta go. This I'm bringing back the gym guy. Yeah. All right. Okay. Bye, <laughs> Roger. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Uh, whatever. No, you can't come in. Hey, Jim. Hello, everybody. Hey, Jim. Welcome back. Welcome back, Jim. Thank you. Hello. Is that working? Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? I feel good. 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 I want some coffee. <laughs> How was it? Was it okay? It was very oh. good. It was very awesome. good. It was we, great. Thank you so much. Shelk came and gave us something to think about, or lots to think about. And uh, then we had a canine come. He mostly spoke <laughs> with uh, Nitrous. Oh, I re yes. I his feeling was he was very uncomfortable. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He. Uh, it was curious. Yeah. He was trying to get used to the human body and was very interested in, in oh, really? the digits. Oh, wow. Yeah, and wasn't sure if he was expressing himself uh, correctly, using the right oh, words. Yeah. But he did was, fine. He did fine. Yeah. Um, what was his name? Uh, his name was... His name was uh, Metrolamus. Metro Laramus. Metro Laramus. Metro Laramus. Okay. <laughs> wow, what name? Right, Metro Laramus. It sounds Greek. So anyway, a Greek dog. <laughs> yes. 
And then um, uh, I think Sharon, no, Sher and Jesse asked him if he is connected to the Anubis in Egypt, and he said oh. they, they they were, yeah. Oh, okay. And what their role was in that. So that's pretty cool. And it was kind of cool because he exists in the third dimension, and I think he's the only he's one of the only ETs that. I've seen channel that it exists in the third dimension and his lifespan is pretty similar to humans so which which I find interesting that they were in Egypt but their lifespan is short yeah so he must no. must have learned that part I don't know or or unless they are able to <laughs> to go back and forth full time and that kind of thing to look into it yeah yeah, that's very strange that they their lifespan isn't that much longer than ours, or yeah, or whatever. Well, maybe because he is in the third dimension rather than the fourth. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, because he prefers the third. Okay. Which begs the question: Can he go into fourth? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. it's really fascinating how I mean, Lakesh talks about third and fourth dimension, how he. He can do assignments or live in third dimension for a week, but um, I just I had never I had me never mentioned my to the other people in the room. Actually, it's kind of cool because um, I know Safira channels a blue, but one of my guides is one of the um, blue races, and her name's Georgiana, and she and I know there was four of them here, so it's really cool to meet other people in the group. That's how I initially met Jim in the first place. <laughs> The four blues from Lakesh's world. Uh, Shirosha, which is Georgiana. Yushira, Lakesh, and Kali. And then there's a Rusha. I Who's said on? Oh, you did? Okay. I thought it was. I thought you said Larisha. Rusha, uh, Rusha Kalish, and Kalat. Lakesh. Uh, yeah, awesome. Yeah. That's oh. a lot of contact from those from those planets. That's pretty cool. Well, yep, their time of their time of um, study, self-study, self-analysis, or whatever you want to call it, is over. So they can do more things now. So, but anyway. Yeah, let's do the healing. Okay, uh, is everybody up for doing a, a little bit of uh, sending Jeannie some healing? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Send Jeannie some love and healing and all that stuff because we know that she is like a vital part of our society here. Mm -hmm. Yes. She yes, the I'm, webinars, I'm up. Every single one. She, does, she watches all the webinars, but she doesn't come to them. So um, uh, we, she's in the hospital right now. So let's send her. Actually, she's in Massachusetts in the hospital. She's from New, New Hampshire, but it's close to Massachusetts. So she went to a hospital in Massachusetts. So, um, Serena, you want to do a prayer for her? An Octorian one? I will. That'll be our blessing for today. We'll do it for Jeannie. Okay, we'll do it for Jeannie. We're done. Sakatuna, you 
Peace be with you, dear one, and energy from the universe. They all who I am when I'm alone. Peace be with you, dear one, and We just want to bestow <sighs> believe that you can be healed. Understand that your personage is important to the world. Do not let the negativity overcome you and let the, the wellness move through your body. Now we can see you and understand that you are someone of notoriety within the human race, someone of great love and understanding, and knows the power of how to use the tools in front of you. We give you great praise, for you give everyone great praise. It comes back upon you a hundredfold. And now we wish for you the wellness of the universe. Blessings, dear one. Blessings, dear one. We understand it. We understand it. We bring you peace and healing and thoughts of great joy. Continue to move in a positive way. There's a lot more, but there it's all it's very personal, so I'm just gonna let that go and finish off with what they said about um, healing, blessings, and understanding. They're reaching down and giving you a touch right now. Much love to you. 
And then there's some personal things they were bringing to you as well. And they had a, a, a little hymn that they sang at the end there, so that was beautiful too. Anybody else have anything? Uh, I can do one in Hebrew. Sure. Jeannie, we're all here for a lot of health, a lot of health. מי יתן והדבר הזה ירד והדבר הזה יעבור ומי יתן ותעלי ותצליחי ואנחנו מאחלים לך פה הרבה מאוד אהבה, הרבה מאוד כוח ומחכים שתחזיר לו וובינארס ואנחנו עכשיו שולחים את האהבה שלנו ואנחנו שולחים את הכוונות הטובות שלנו ואנחנו נגיע אלייך הרבה אהבה ותקווה בדגש על תקווה שלום Shalom. So, anybody else would like to say a few words? The Elohim are with her as well. Oh, nice. Yes, they have many influence nowadays. They actually have a guide next to my brother. Very good. Elohim. Ruth, would you like to say something? You're muted. Uh, yes, I would like to lead a healing meditation, but I can do that after we're offline as well. Okay. Anybody Thank else? You. Anybody else would like to say something? I'll be talking to you soon, Jeannie. <laughs> Yes. A caro otto nanos, puru a catia liosoto, or no cotus curu or two taniopo, or a nasuruana nascuru a cati, a yosona, cuata nanascu, or one a nasuruata, alias a nacu, or no sariata nascutua, a yosotu no, or one nasa, to no suruata, kiatu. Ona suataka, alia soro ondo paratani oso, polo kuatana, alia anuas kua, tuasana katu, polania so katu. I'm getting many visitors now. They're all, they all want to say something. <laughs> <clears throat> Very nice. Hashua koho tiono uruo hutu washi a kiotuho. Anio hutu washi. Askarioto ha tia. Enio su uruo tu. Hana shuaka. Tua nio suaha. Tosko to tono. Ya. A yo no ha. Tua. A tua kuskuruato. E ya tua ho. Ono osuru. Okuotu, osuono, ariono ha, tashua, tatua, antukuokuoha. Rise up and be healed. Accept the healing that is yours. There is strength and power in the light and in the spirit. And you are privy to it. Just accept it. Rise up, stand up. Let it be whole. Let yourself be whole. Let everyone know that this is a miracle. Let everyone know that you are here to share your miracle with the world. Tatanana na kutuku, ulo katatanana na kurua, katanana na liyana na lua. Aliolo na nos kurua, kariyato to na noska. Tariyata na nos kurua, kariyari ari 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 osorua, tarariu. Orar ni ari ari a, kurua, tariyana na mikusku. Ora ni ari ari aku. Turuana na dia, taria dia 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 dua, dia na na dua, dia, dia, orang na dia dia, dia orang, orang na dia dia, aku ada dia dia, aku dia na na dia kia dia, aku orang aku dia, aku dia na na nusku, orang na na dia, kurua, tari kurua na ni, 
Arioso Rua, a Chiaria Runo, Urua da Chiaria, Aria Scurua, Aria Sucura, Tani Oro de Scu, Uru Uruana Nasiaca, Ato Sucuruana Nascara. Healing is for all of you. Healing is for all of you and accept it. There are some out there that are not accepting their healings because they are not feeling it, but healing is for all of you. Healing is stand up. Healing is stand up for it. For it to be standing up for you. For your health is in inside and it is something that is part of you. And you all must have it. It is for everyone. Healing is for all of you. Ki shamana ha ku na halaha ki na ha mila ho ho shuna ki la ta ha shama ha ki la shu 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 ku ko la halaha shida hi ma halaha na. You will remember this moment because it is a moment of power and joy and understanding and of great uplifting. We were uplifting you right now. And it will be a moment that you will remember for always. Do not doubt. Receive, accept, and understand that you are healed. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Jim. I want to say, get well, Jeannie. We're all pulling for you. Yes. Amen. 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 We are Amen. here. Amen. So, all right. Thank well, you, everybody, for coming. Have a great day, and we'll go offline now. And um, yes. if you want to stick around for a couple minutes to just Offer silent prayer or whatever for Jeannie, that would be nice, and then we can go on our way. Okay. Um, we already did our vigil for her already, so we don't really, <laughs> some of you need to go, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. As always, uh, donations are always welcome. Um, if you benefit in any way um, from this webinar, please do donate uh, towards Jim. And Max, uh, hi Max. I hope you're watching these webinars every once in a while. And yeah, uh, I talk all day. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I would so, like to. I would like to so say goodbye you. to. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, I want to say bye to Fred C. That to Will that to thank you for being there and supporting Jim. Bye. And bye. hope it was good for you as well being there. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you all. Bye. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Sabrina.